Enmat Talks is an initiative for sharing knowledge between students, staff and management of the Nordic and Baltic Academies for Higher Music Education and anyone else interested. Welcome to this second edition, Enmat Talks Wellbeing in Lockdown. The session is moderated by me and my name is Camilla Orgel. So Lotta Akko, studying at Ola University of Applied Sciences, of media and performing arts. She's majoring in classical singing, plays violin and viola, and has worked as assistant director and stage manager in the Finnish National Opera. Then we have Jone Finnekoven. Can you wave, Jone? Yes, and Jone is studying composition at the Greek Academy in Bergen. And on top of his studies, he's a bass player in a number of bands and is the chair of the music committee, board member of the Student Society of Bergen, and a board member of the concert series, Avgad. Then we have Sverker Rundqvist. Sverker, yes. Sverker is a classical double bass player and is doing his master in musical performance at the Norwegian Academy of Music in Oslo. And he's been engaged in a lot of different roles inside and outside of the Academy. For instance, as a former chair of the student council and as a current board member. Then we have Marianne Lykke Jacobsen. And Marianne is the head of internationalization at the Royal Danish Academy of Music and also responsible for managing the counseling services at the Academy. And then last but certainly not least, we have Vibeke Jenikovshede. And Vibeke is the head of the Institute of Psychology in Copenhagen and is among the leading researchers in public health promoting promotion nationally and internationally. And Vibeke, I'm going to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about what do we mean by well-being? What is the term actually? Because that's your expertise. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you very much for for having me here today. I think it's a a very important topic, obviously. Um, So well-being in general is a combination of a feeling and functioning. So it's about having mainly a feeling of being happy and satisfied with life. Naturally, we can't always walk around being satisfied all the time, but in general, and a feeling of functioning. So also being able to function well in combination and in relation to those around us. It's very much about having a sense of meaning and it seems like we might have lost Vivica. Just add a sense of meaning. We will probably Stop get her me. back again. Are you, I, are you still here, Vivica? I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm just going to find you and uh, put you back so we can also see you. Just one sec. But you can just uh, continue speaking. It's completely yes, fine. Yes, thank you. I don't actually know where I was cut off, but this is just one of the things in, in these times at the moment. So apologies for that. But it's very much about having a, f- a feeling of being satisfied and happy with life. Naturally, that will vary. And, and being able to function well in combination with others. So having a sense of meaning and purpose, something and someone to get up for in the morning. A feeling of belonging and being able to contribute with and to something beyond ourselves. So it's important to say that um, mental health and well-being is a lot more than absence of non-well-being or, or mental illness. And our life circumstances vary uh, as do our different uh, situations. And it goes up and down in life for all of us. There may be various reasons for why we're not thriving at certain points of time in our lives. But we also know from research that there are things that are generic to all of us across cultures, regardless of whether we're young or old, rich or poor, healthy or unhealthy. And that is having the possibility, opportunity and ability to act, belong and commit. That is absolutely critical for our mental health and well-being. Thank you so much, Vivica. And now I've managed to put the panel back on screen, I hope, (laughs) while you were speaking. So now that we're a bit more aware of what we're actually talking about when we're speaking about well-being, we would like to do, again, a small exercise with you. So you have to go back to menti.com again now. I'll just write it in the chat. 
And I will share my screen with a couple of questions for you that we will then take as a starting point for the panel. So please go to menti.com. And we're going to ask you to answer two questions. The first one is, have you felt a decline in your well-being in the past three months? So you can start answering now. And remember, you need to type in the code on the top of the screen. And we can already see now that there is definitely an overweight of responses on the side of this that's saying that within the past three months, you have experienced a decline in your well-being. Which, to be honest, is also what we expected. I'm going to give the last two people a minute more to answer this. Yes, thank you. Okay, then we're going to do another question. And this time, I want you to answer whether you have noticed a decline in the well being of the people around you these past three months. And this is interesting. This time, there is no one answering. No. Thank you so much for doing this. I think this gives an, us an image of exactly why this is important. So now I'm going to ask our three student representatives to comment a bit on what we've seen here. Can you recognize this in your institutions? How did you actually experience this yourself or did you see it in your co-students, colleagues and so on? And maybe Sverka, could you be the first one? Yes, of course. Uh, can I just ask you, I see everyone on the that's participating. I think if Camilla, if you put spotlight for everyone, then it will just be the panel in the screen. Or is that not to pin, but to spotlight for everyone? It makes it a little bit easier because then our pictures will be a little bit bigger. But while you're uh, doing that, I can I can start to to speak how I think about this. I I really recognize what you said uh, in the start, Vibeka, with this uh, well-being also uh, varying and going in waves because that's that's been kind of the way for for me uh, and also for the people around me that it's really. One week, I'm really satisfied with being uh, in the slow temple and enjoying not doing so much and being being able to focus uh, in a slow tempo. And one week, I'm frustrated and bored about the, everything being in lockdown. Um, and that's in with when learning that uh, it's been also the way of coping with it to know that it's it's. Uh, when it's down, it's going to go up again <laughs> and to kind of rest in that, uh, that you don't have to uh, uh, not necessarily uh, take it so hard that it's going down, uh, but just accept it and know that it will be going up again. Um, and then it's really interesting with this mentee uh, that we just did uh, about recognizing that others have been affected mentally uh, because I, I actually realized that or thought about it really clear yesterday um, when talking to a friend and I, I thought that I, I didn't get the same reactions and, that, and answers that I was expecting. And then it was re a really fast conclusion that, okay, maybe this person isn't quite well right now. And I think that it's been like that for, for the whole uh, Corona part, but I hadn't, hadn't thought about it so clear that, um, I mean, it's an, it's an, um, it's a faster conclusion to think that someone is maybe not feeling so well right now because we have this collective reason for not being well uh, that we don't have uh, otherwise. 
um, and I think, um, yeah, for me that 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 was a kind of a. Uh, I realized that this collective uh, collective reason of not being uh, well that I think can can help us to to uh, to cope when we maybe don't get the reactions and answers from people we we think that we know. Um, yeah, I think that that's my thoughts about it right now. Lotta, would you like to follow up? Yes. Um, Hello everyone, uh, nice to be here. Um, I think I get a second point about uh, it's really different to try to feel like you're uh, express your own feelings or your own well-being. It's easier kind of to see it in other people's. And also I think I have seen it with a lot of my friends and it's kind of like a, um, all the people around me are feeling it more or less and it also goes in waves together when everyone is feeling more down it's affecting me as well and then i'm feeling more down myself and when somebody finds the motivation or some reason to rehearse or practice or just to do stuff it's also then easier for myself to stay motivated but in general, when everybody is feeling more or less a bit down, then it's really hard to try to like keep the drive going just by myself. And especially when the, like here we are now starting soon a new lockdown period and everybody is already depressed before it has even started. So I think that's, that's really hard, but the like peer su support is, the main thing that keeps me going and helps me through the uh, like hardest lockdowns when everything is forbidden and everything is online. Thank you so much. And Jon? Uh, yeah, I second uh, the points of my two colleagues. Uh, this is this does sort of matters passed in different ways for different people. Uh, and when talking to my uh, fellow students, I'm in the last year of my program, uh, so we're sort of um, on the peak of something new, all of us, uh, and that's sort of a scary prospect right now. I think as musicians, we have all been confronted face to face with a sort of existential crisis uh, regarding our profession. Um, it shows us how um, our prospects are, are how, just how fragile our prospects can be. Um, so not, it's not just the present that's sort of difficult to cope with. The future is also um, kind of a scary thing right now, even though we are indeed looking forward to it. Um, it is a sort of, it is also kind of terrifying uh, to sort of, um, yeah, to see. Um, uh, or to sort of cope with uh, what we're going to do in a couple of months uh, when this is um, over or not, we're not sure, so. Thank you, Jonne. And can I ask you, Mayenne, is, is this, this a bit of maybe fear is a big word, but still worry about the future. Is this something that you also experience in the students in, in your academy in general? Yes, um, I'm thinking about what Nibka said that uh, like a uh, generic uh, situation, but uh, especially we have about, uh, this is about music uh, students and uh, also international students. So I think there's a uh, well-being is uh, maybe a very, you know, a very nice word, but maybe we are in an anxiety situation uh, related to our future situation. Uh, it's also very much related to individual situation, very much for music students, because we are affected in different ways uh, related to our instrument situation, our practice possibilities, our home country situation, our safety, uh, our families. And I think this is something which is really special because 
we are used to actually uh, have a lot of time alone. We are uh, used to be in the practice room, but now it's uncertainty about how long, how much, and what is actually our career perspective. So I think it's, um, it's very special and important for us to share our thoughts uh, as music uh, uh, sector. And can I ask just all of you, or oh, I see Vibeke have, has a comment. Please, Vibeke. Yes, uh, I, would, I would just like to say that it's absolutely normal also under these circumstances that this is a crisis and some people are affected uh, harder by this crisis uh, than others. But throughout life, regardless, we will be met with different uh, types of crises. And it's from there that we can perhaps lean on research from what we actually know can help at least uh, to some extent to try and safeguard uh, mental well-being. Because at the moment, it is uh, like you said, Jona, it's the uncertainty. So I think this uncertainty is something many people share, also uh, small shop owners and, and things like this. It's also the length of time it's been going on because we can usually handle quite large amounts of pressure in our lives actually extreme amounts of pressure as long as it doesn't go on for too long and as long as we can sort of see the finish line so this that it's been going on for a long time that we can't see a direct finish line that we've got all the uncertainty that uh, is involved as well with the worry that that leads to it would be very strange if people didn't feel quite a, a certain amount of of pressure or strain um, the thing is, though, that as you also pointed to, Sverga, the, the realization that throughout life, regardless of, you know, COVID or not, things will go up and down in life. And you can say that regardless of how well things are going or how poorly, um, it's not going to last. And that can be good news or bad news, depending on where you are on the curve at any given time. But I think it is important to bear in mind that this is one of the things. Um, and obviously, as we age, we have the experience of having had ups and downs in our lives. So we know, you know, that that uh, it will vary and that hopefully things will, you know, be good again. Um, and then you said as well, Lotta, that being affected by those around us, that's also a very strong element in all of this because we are social creatures by nature. We are affected by our surroundings and we affect one another to a lot larger extent than we might think. So this we know, uh, you know, we're affected by how our, our family situation is, how our study situation is, how the, the community around us is. And this is also where uh, it's important to perhaps know that we also affect those around us. So we can, I'm not saying that everyone should just walk around being, uh, you know, naively overly positive, but I think sharing um, our, our concerns or our difficulties with one another and supporting one another through, and perhaps also coming with good tips of advice for what we're doing to, to keep our you know, chins up or what works for us is the good way. And I think here, Vivica, you're, you're touching upon something very interesting with the word community, because what, what is a community within our institutions and how has that been affected now by the fact that we're not, or to a very limited extent, physically in the same location? So would any of you like to share some thoughts about that? I, uh, I just uh, first had a comment on this wave uh, thing that that we should talk. Um, I mean, and and uh, and I just I just think it's so important that when we do, we kind of have respect for this for for um, our our fellow students or or people around us being on different places in this waveforms. Uh, that sometimes you can be on the top and talk to someone on the low, and it can somebody some sometimes be a real clash. 
we want be because the one on the top is really uh, excited and and have a sudden uh, um, feeling of of inspiration and and speed in the life, and and then when you talk to someone in below it it and and I know from experience being on the on the lowest point in these waves that it can be really frustrating <laughs> to talk to a person that is that is. Uh, uh, doing so much stuff and is really excited and, and it's practicing really well and everything. So, so um, I think it's so important that when we talk to each other, we're, we're open about where we are in our lives. Uh, and that can vary from the day to the next, but that we, that, and that we show respect and that the, the person on the top really kind of show respect that yeah, I know now that you're not well, but I, I like to share this anyways, and that the person on the low also know that it's it's nice to hear this. I can't I can't take this in right now, but I'm happy for you, and and I will maybe tomorrow be be inspired by this, to to avoid that <laughs> these waves really really clash and just get a negative effect. That's actually a very accurate description, also of community, <laughs> the understanding of where we are, also in relation to each other. Um, I'm thinking then how would you in your institutions or just in your lives try to support what Sverker just said? What does it take to actually have awareness about where you are yourself, but also where others are in this wave form that we're talking about? Lotte? Um, I have like myself found it most important to accept first of all myself that I can be in the any point of that wave and also accept it from others and normally I think uh, music students generally they are used to working alone they are used to practicing alone but then the thing that gives me energy is playing or singing music together with other people and now it kind of has been taken away not necessarily completely but almost and I think it's very hard when you see people on only in the hallway when everybody is going by themselves alone to the practice room and then you need to do all the work by yourself and you don't get to motivating experience of playing together or performing and I think that um, in the community where everybody's practicing alone to get to go to the stage together and now the like fun part has been taken away i think it's especially important that we also accept that we get tired and sometimes the practicing alone isn't going as well as we would like to and i think if we accept it from ourselves then it's also easier to like understand others and and give the support that they need. Yes, Jorn. Uh, yes. Um, I come from a so I my background is in popular music or jazz, um, where community is everything. Uh, a minimum amount of at the time is supposed to be spent alone in the rehearsal space uh, as much time as possible is meant to be spent together with others um, and uh, this situation has made that uh, quite a difficult prospect um, and I, I do so I do see it in in some of my some of my projects some of the more um, with some of my projects uh, there driven by uh, quite personal lyrics, for example. Um, they're written alone. That could be a sort of uh, difficult but uh, rewarding experience. Uh, but it is when you put it out uh, in front of others and uh, you work through these things together um, that you can sort of have some feeling of catharsis with it uh, when you see it with other people that it hits them and they can contribute to it. Um, and that's sort of, for me at least, um, a really rewarding communal experience with music, uh, which has been these days taken away. Um, it is the solitary experience of music that is 
prevalent and that can be difficult um, um, and then uh, that um, that, that that catharsis has to be moved to a different venue almost uh, in conversation but uh, and that can work uh, when you sort of talk these things through that way but I do feel like uh, actually working musically with things that are difficult uh, is something I miss uh, greatly. Um, so I hope that is something that can return to my practice uh, as soon as possible. So, so in many ways, I'm thinking that we know from uh, from research as well that that uh, music and, and cultural activities in general are quite good for everybody's uh, mental health and well-being. So, in a sense, I'm also thinking that you guys are part of the key as to how are we going to get through on the other side as well. You know, a lot of what you do is what keeps up hopes. Uh, we've been able, we've seen that when people are in crisis, very often we turn to, uh, you know, at least in Denmark, it's singing together on TV or on the balconies. It's very much, you know, it's those things that tie us together. It's also um, a way to express ourselves uh, and understand, you know, the, the current situations. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on where you are as well, uh, country-wise and various restrictions, but I'm sort of thinking I would love to see more musicians take to the streets, you know, to uh, initially we had the first wave, we had musicians that turned up around uh, building blocks and things like that and put up little concerts. And I really think that, first of all, I know from research that doing something for others is a way of strengthening your own well-being. But they had a huge contribution to the people living there because it's also giving hope and giving something to be together about. So I was just wondering if any of you have, uh, you know, sort of taken to the streets or, you know, gone online or done living room concerts for others or. Um... I think Mayen, did you have a comment also or. Yes. And then uh, Yes. Okay. So, so what I want to comment on is again about the wave situation for 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 the students. Um, what what I think is also it's it's we have to talk with our faculties very much. And and what we did we we asked them to really report back about each of the students. Uh, and this is really not normal in the Danish culture to to be so directly as institution and ask so much about taking responsibility. But I think it was a way to really uh, follow each student's uh, well-being. Um, and I think it's necessary to reach out and be, be more aware of individual situation because we cannot expect and wait for each student to, to contact us uh, about their well-being. So it's about giving one person the responsibility of taking care of the students. So it's uh, something which we did, and I think uh, it's not something we can just uh, ask about once uh, during a semester. We have to follow up and keep a, an eye on the situation. Thank you, Marianne and Sverka. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear this, Marianne, because this is, I think this is really, really important. Uh, and also when, when the staff not being at school and you can't go and, and knock on the door and whatever, the, the it's harder to call someone, send an email to, to whatever teacher or, or administrational uh, person that is responsible for you. So I think it's really important with this, this contacting uh, proactive way of, of taking care of the student. Uh, students um, on, on the theme of, of uh, music helping people in difficult situations I, I totally agree I think and for me it's, 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 the, it's an extremely important role of the music or function of the music in society uh, this, this social uh, community uh, creating uh, aspect of the music but for me it's it's I mean one of the realizations I've, I've had through corona is that this the social social aspect of, of experiencing music uh, not only performing music, but also listening to music together with people and this feeling of being hundreds or a thousand people in the same place listening to the same music at the same time. Um, and that's that's not possible. And that's for me why it's not 
I, I mean, I like live stream concert and looking at, at music or movies at, on the on the on the screen. But but the thing missing is this thing of it's me being alone in my in my sofa listening to the music. And that's why for me, it doesn't quite work or it works, but it's it's it, it takes some some more fantasy and, and to, to realize that it's I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this room, but it's it's actually a lot of people around the world listening to the music at the same time. Um, but but with this music in the street and, and musicians being the, the key or the solution to the problem, I, I also think that that might be a, a not a good thing, but also a bad thing, because I think that not lots of people know this and know that people know, know that music actually can help people cope with difficult situations. But then we know that we it's so hard to do it right now. I mean, we can take to the streets, but it's it's still we, I mean, here in Oslo, we haven't been able to practice together with people and we haven't been able to to have this this practicing processes or, or, or developing projects and, and knowing that that we aren't allowed um, is I think is even though we know that if we would <laughs> be allowed, we would help. Uh, and and that that's a that's a special thing with this with this crisis. I mean, in a war or in a in in a different in a different crisis where we still are allowed to meet each other, then music really can be helpful. And we know that musicians then we get actual role in the solution. But this time we it's so much harder because we can't meet and we can't in that way be the solution that we maybe want to be. But I'm also thinking on once we start opening up again, I'm also thinking about the, the sort of healing process being ready there and uh, actually having the realization amongst a lot of people, what big role music plays um, in general. And I completely agree. I very much miss live concerts uh, as well. So it's, uh, it's not the same. It's just sort of saying that I think there's a, for many of the people I know that are not uh, musicians there's become an increasing understanding of how important this is to actually safeguard and look after in society that it isn't just nice to have it's actually need to have so i think at least there's that realization yes Becca. yeah uh, i totally agree and I, i'm i'm really convinced that when we open if we just get through this crisis when we open i think we will be really really ready to to play to play again and and you you asked before about this if if anyone of us had experience with live stream and and i've, I've done some live stream concert and i i've actually had really really good experience with it uh, especially from people uh, i mean i'm from stockholm and 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 normally people from stockholm can't go to my concerts here in oslo uh, but this time it was a lot of people from home attending my concert um, and and um, we we I think we in our in our um, uh, music bubbles uh, among professional musicians we can sometimes forget this this um, uh, this aspect of, of more people being um, available to go to the concerts when we're doing a live stream it's it's uh, when we talk about live stream it's a lot of a focus on, on the quality and the and the that we're missing out the the live effect and that it's harder to to get through the screen and everything but we tend to forget this aspect of how how many actually is possible to listen and how we meet people in their homes in their lives where they are right there right now instead of going to a concert and kind of making yourself ready for a musical experience and you're you maybe dressed up and whatever we actually come to their homes where they are right now and that is a, those those other um circumstances can really make the music get a, a whole other impact uh, and i get I mean, one of the concerts I play is really one of the most, I've never been so important. I've never had the feeling of being so important that I had after having this concert because I got so many comments on, 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 on the, how people had experienced it. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's really, really possible. Um, but also I think it's, it's important to not compare it to a live concert because it's something completely different. And that is a way of maybe uh not not making it in conflict but actually see the different kind of functions of the different concert thank you Svaka. Marianne? um I, i'm just thinking that a lot of uh, concerns from from the students is also that they are actually 
in the middle of in, a, in studying. They have to study, they have to learn, they have to progress in the studies. So uh, this is also what I remember that we, we learn or we have to be aware of the process instead of the end results uh, in this situation. And, and this is maybe something we have to be even more aware of how to communicate with the students that uh, normally we, we think about the performance as the end result. And, and this is what we, we strive to, 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 to work on. But now we need to, to um, convince ourselves that the teaching we are doing is good enough and how can we improve it and how can we change it on the conditions we have uh, and also uh, how can we also uh, realize that it's not what we want to do actually right now uh, because this is a, a difficult thing that that we all we are all in a situation where we have to think okay this is an online um, teaching situation and it's what we can offer right now but it's not really what we want to do uh, so so I think this is important to to uh, to talk about it and also see how can we get the best out of the conditions we have right now and also believe that we'll be together and play together in a real situation again. Thank you, Mayene. And I also think there's an, an important point in that everyone is affected by this. So it's not only students, it's also teachers, it's administration, it's everyone on a very personal level being affected by a global crisis. And maybe that's also a way of stepping forward as people in front of each other in general, that is, is interesting. And that could maybe help us in gaining more focus on well-being in our education and in the music business as a whole in general. So I think what we're also doing here is taking a very needed, if you ask me, an important step towards also making the discussion we're having here a priority post-corona. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that as well, Vivica. It looked like you had something to say also. Yeah, no, I was just saying that I think uh, actually a lot of pointed to as well, the thing of uh, ex trying to accept, and that's uh, a lot easier said than done, but trying to accept the things we can't do anything about and then try and do something about the, the things that are within our control. And I think that you, Mayana, uh, pointing to the fact that ha actually giving someone the responsibility for following up proactively, ensuring that we create a room where we ensure that no one's left behind, that we take a mutual responsibility for one another's uh, mental health and well-being because it is you know it is everybody's business here and afterwards and uh, and like i said throughout life we will be hit with crises sometimes it's only more at an individual level um, but so there is something in understanding that we're not always in control of everything and it's not just up to the individual um, to, to try and, and sort this out or to be happier, perhaps. It's really a community um, effort. So I think it's great that you have proactively uh, ensured following up. I think ha perhaps doing, I don't know, student groups or check-ins uh, where there is, everyone takes a mutual responsibility for ensuring that if someone isn't turning up for those check-ins, it might actually be because they're really not thriving. And, uh, and they need someone else to reach out to them. It's difficult to reach out when you're not doing well. So, um, so this thinking that because we're all in it together, it is also a mutual responsibility that when we're on top, we perhaps take uh, a bit more um, responsibility for trying to also support those around us who may be struggling at the moment. And this will vary. Um, and together we're just stronger. Thank you. And Jorne? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, respond to what you said, Camilla, and also you, Vibeke, uh, about um, how this, for me at least, has highlighted not just how we uh, interact together as students uh, now, but also pre-corona. Uh, I had a talk with one of my fellow students in the composition program uh, recently uh, and we sort of figured, we realized that we hadn't really taken that many steps <clears throat> as a, 
sort of uh, composition collective uh, to meet um, in the times prior to Corona uh, um, to sort of uh, build a community over time uh, consistently. Um, and it took sort of uh, this sort of extreme isolation crisis for us to almost realize that as composers. Um, so we're trying to sort of better that now, uh, but um, it, that is kind of one of the silver linings of this whole thing, is that it does highlight our needs, uh, not just in extreme times, but also in normal times. Um, and it, couldn't, it can be really difficult to sort of follow through and realize how important these things are um, in all times, actually. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jone. And Lotta? Yes, uh, I wanted to say kind of about the same uh, point. Uh, we now realize uh, how much we uh, used to appreciate the things that were normal, like uh, accompanist classes and uh, a possibility to perform. And I think now when, when it's not possible, I have found it very helpful from the like uh, institutional level that there has been some chances to make uh, video recordings for competitions or have uh, every now and then a uh, accompanist class with a real pianist with a safety distance in a bigger hall or stuff like that. Uh, it's really motivating. It's really, really important that if it's only once a month or, or one, uh, twice a week or something like that, but you get to do it somehow uh, because I think it feels so good to be able to uh, do music together with someone or, or meet a live person in a bigger hall, or we have been here able to, for example, teach our um, students with the mask on or in a bigger hall. And it's so important to meet a live person. And I never used to be able to appreciate it before Corona, but now during these times, it feels so special when you get to work together with someone for making a video or something like that. So I think that's, that has been really important for me. And even if I know it, it's four, four weeks from now, but then I get to do a video recording and then show the video to my family or friends. It's really important to have some kind of goals. Thank you, Lotta. And I think before we let Vivica comment, this is the time to open up for questions now. And there is a question from Siri that actually links to what you're saying, Lotta. Do you think we're losing music students now? Are people giving up or choosing to pursue a different path or are most pushing through? So I will invite you to comment on that. Yes, Lotta. Yes. Uh... I have heard from many friends and even people who are already professionally in the field that people are considering changing career paths or studying another profession. And especially um, already, I think this is for the students who are now graduating, especially crucial time because they don't get to go to the uh, work life. There is no work in this field at the moment or or the things you can do are very limited. And it's very hard when you graduate and you don't get your mm, like students' uh, money support anymore. And you would need to make your living at the moment. And I think this is making a lot of people considering uh, other careers or even like quitting completely. And it's, it's really sad and worrying. So do you see initiatives, all of you, we could take to prevent that from happening? I think uh, it's really, um, it's very hard because of course, I think even myself, I have uh, struggled with the idea, what can I do if this keeps uh, happening or goes on for years? Where can I get then the work experience? and? Um, I think the thing we can do is try to 
try to uh, arrange any kind of possibilities to perform, even if, if it's low paid, even if it's a recorded thing or um, live stream, but try to support each other and um, like take ex uh, every experience that is possible to make happen during these really crucial times. Because even one time when you get to perform, it can be life changing and then you once again remember why do you want to do this. Very good point. We also have a, a suggestion from Kel, which is a very good suggestion that we because elaborates a bit on the act belong commit message. Could you do that? Vibeke? Yes, absolutely. And actually, it ties nicely up to uh, many of the things that, that you are saying, all of you as well. And and just to say that this isn't rocket science. Most of us, we know uh, what is good for our well-being. We just very often forget to prioritize it in a busy day-to-day -day life. And perhaps here's the time to uh, take some of these messages home that we can then also remember on the other side. But first of all, we know that it's uh, important that we do something active, do something with someone, which at the moment is a challenge, at least physically, and then do something meaningful. And if I uh, dive into that a little bit, we know that uh, staying active in various ways is quite important to all of us. If we, for example, you know, just like the body doesn't like monotonous uh, movement all the time, it will wear us down. It's the same with the mind. We need variation. So if we were sat at home every day, all day behind a screen without getting outside or talking to someone, it really isn't a question of whether we're going to get depressed. It's a question of when. So it's very important that we um, try to stay active in the ways that are possible. Physical activity, we know, is quite important for our mental health and well-being. So even if it's being able to go outside for a walk every day in the fresh air, uh, inner demons hate fresh air, that's something that we could put on our to-do list, um, that we try and stay mentally active so that we do something that requires our concentration and that can be difficult when we feel stressed or under pressure, but it could be trying to um, get into flow around, uh, you know, practicing a certain piece of music. But it could also be if you need a break from this or something else, it could be whatever, you know, if, if it's uh, learning a new skill in another area. But this is also about having this goal setting that you pointed to, Lotta. Setting small or large goals is quite important for us to give us a sense of meaning and something to get up for in the morning. And then also staying spiritually active, you could say, it's actually also about making time to just be and to just uh, be at ease. So people that are religious can practice their religion, but it could be yoga or mindfulness. Again, it could be just a quiet walk in nature, but actually just prioritizing time to just try and be at, at peace with what is, which again is something that may require practice and then the belonging uh, is about our social relations and I think the the important thing here is to say although we need to keep a social distance it's not the same as accepting being isolated so it is trying to reach out to our relatives and friends um, and that is actually very important also if you're not feeling well so again like I said this is the the mutual responsibility for for one another's um, sense of belonging and the final one about uh, having sense of meaning and purpose I mean what is meaningful for me to engage in would likely not be meaningful to each one of you and so this differs from person to person but perhaps thinking about where do I get my energy from as well so you I mean if you can't go and play together with your band and that's where you get energy are there other places where you could try and do something that would give you a sense of, of uh, meaning. And being something for someone else is actually a huge source of, um, of uh, strengthening our well-being because we are social creatures by nature. And this is the only way we've survived as a species is, uh, is you know, being able to, to collaborate and being something for one another and being able to communicate. So, so doing well for others is a good way to look after one's own well-being. 
And then initially, like we talked about, the, the general uncertainty of everything makes it even more important to try and, and create routines or structure in, in our daily lives so that we try and, you know, get up, uh, get out of bed and go to bed at probably the same time we're used to, to try and perhaps say that this is the corner where I go and practice uh, so that you don't have the uh, sense of always being confronted with something that may not be working out at the moment. Um, and sleep. I mean, quite, we know that a lot of things that are good for our general physical health are quite important for our mental health and well-being. So, so trying to look after our sleep, um, and this is helpful if we've had exercise during the day and fresh air and things like this. So it's like I said, it really isn't rocket science. Most of us know this intuitively, but we just forget to prioritize it in a very busy day-to-day -day life. And once we start feeling under pressure, quite often these are the things that we stop doing uh, because it's easier to perhaps throw yourself on the couch and watch Netflix or, you know, whatever. Just a complete random example there. But, um, but I think it's important to, um, to bear in mind that there are things that we can do at an individual level. And at certain periods of time, we've got more energy to do this ourselves. At some times we need more support and this is where I think as an institution and study leaders and stuff, it's quite important that we there have someone that enables students to talk about this and perhaps just even remind, remind the students or ask them, what are you actually doing to stay active in various ways? So to actually help provide the structure, which is also generally what organizations seem to be good at. <laughs> Yeah. So, so that's very convenient. Um, yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Vivica. Great points, Kilt says. That's nice. It definitely is. So yes, and and I think especially committing to each other, like and that 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 doesn't have to mean musically committing to each other, is important as well. I've been practicing, for instance, uh, going for walks while speaking to someone on the phone. <laughs> because it, it sounds silly when you say it, but but you just you find yourself, for instance, start to describe the landscape you're seeing, and this other person is describing, of course, another landscape. Uh, oh, there's a deer over there. I have a duck. You know, it's it's like again, it is rocket science, <laughs> and you could set up these telephone walks also to not then end up behind a screen when you're actually trying to to connect with someone. I see that Sverker had a comment. Yeah. Um, and and this also go goes for for what Lotta said earlier Bea, that this accepting yourself because I, I think also it's so much easier to accept yourself when you when you in in conversation with others get a get a picture now on how others have it and then you realize okay I'm not alone and then that makes it also easier to to accept where you are uh, yourself so it's it's, it's just a positive uh, positive cycle that just uh, I mean you can turn the the negative cycle also. And, and also, I, um, I think it's so important to, in all of these points that you say, Vibika, I'm, I really agree with everything. And it's so important that you, um, that you, um, I mean, it's, it's super hard when you are down to do all these things. But for me, one thing, one thing is acceptance that to accept that it, 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 it is hard and that it's fine that it's hard. And then you can, maybe it's enough with just going outside for five minutes and that's that's what you did that day um but also in that also know that as we talked about again this waves that nothing is static and that i i feel it's a risk that you kind of decide okay now i'm feeling bad and that's that's my and and um and then it's it can be hard sometimes to to see the possibilities that that present themselves but to to uh, accept that you're low, but also know that this will going it's going to change, and then you kind of have your eyes open for when it's changing. So when you wake up the next day, you feel okay. What day is it today? Okay, I'm still down. Okay, then it's five minutes outside. That's the goal for today. Or you feel like, okay, maybe this is a better day. Maybe I will call a friend today and go outside for five minutes. But that you really really. Um, know that it's not static this is not something that will last until corona is over it's, it's actually possible that it's that this trend will will change thank you Sverker. and we have reached 
the conclusion of our time frame because we all need to go away from the screen. <laughs> um, and Kel will now post a short, yes, he already did, a short link for a small evaluation. And we would be very grateful if you would take the time to fill this out because it helps us develop this Enman Talks initiative more. And I want to say thank you so much to all the panelists for being here. It's been very, very nice. And I think at least for me, it's started a lot of new ideas about what to do. And I feel more hopeful than I did this morning. And I think that's a very important point of this. And that we shouldn't, as I said earlier, leave this topic at the door of Corona that will someday close. This should be an open door always. And this is a good starting point for taking this with us along the way in our institutions going forward post Corona. So thank you so much to all of you. Please fill out the evaluation and have a nice day. Thank you very much Take for care. having us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.